Hello guys, my name is Evans and welcome to this video tutorial. In this tutorial, I'm going to be continuing uh, with the um, the October-November um, 2016 IGCSE ICT Paper 3. And um, in the last video, we ended on step 19 and in the video, we continue with step number 20. So in cell G6, enter a formula to calculate the advertising cost, which is the rate entered in step 16, multiply by 1. 25 if the resort has 50 or less rooms to 75 if the resort has um, um, more than 50 but less than 101 rooms uh, rooms and um, 150 if the resort has more than 100 but less than 201 rooms and um, 200 if the resort has more than 200 rooms now I must say here guys that um, um, let me come back here um, when you talk about nested if statements um, um, by nested, we mean one if statement embedded within another statement. It means um, one if statement being dependent upon another if statement. Okay, so when you talk about nested if statements, these things are very important. Let me just underline this part. One, if you've got two options, things like a girl or a boy, you want to choose and you can only choose one of them, then you can only use one if statement. Okay. You don't need to nest these ones. Um, that means that um, you can say if in if in Excel um, you're comparing a gender, you say G3. If G3 equal to boy, then the true part is that you will say hello sir. If it's the only alternative that remains, if it's not a boy, I mean, what else can it be? <laughs> If it, if it, if it's not a boy, I mean, what else? It has, has to be a girl. Okay, so. <laughs> Okay, so you say hello, madam. Okay, so one, two options will give you one if statement. If you have two, um, if you have got um, three options, such as mango, purple, and orange, suppose we want to say somebody only loves um, one of these fruits, no other fruits, it can only be these fruits. Okay. It's either they love mango, if they don't man love mango, it's either they love purple, if they don't love purple, automatically they love orange I mean, because that's the only thing that is remaining so if you've got three options if you've got three options um, the thing is that one you have two if statements okay an example is that it will be one if statement will be the outer one in the loop in the nested <laughs> condition so it will be if f3 or favorite fruit or f3 is equal to mango then, if this is true, then write, wow, else, test for the two remaining options. Now, for the two remaining options, it comes back to this one, two options, one if statement. So, you only have one if statement that is going to remain. So, if F3 equal to popo, which is this one, then say, yippee. <laughs> okay. So, if it is not, you don't need to test if it is orange. Because the only thing, if they don't love purple, they don't love mango, the only thing that remains is they love orange. So just say, woohoo! <laughs> Actually, it's supposed to be, woohoo! <laughs> okay, so, right. So that is that. Now, you can also have four conditions or four options like we have here. We have four options. One, two, three, four. If you have four options, um, the logic is that you're supposed to have three statements. Okay? Generally, let me just put this one. Generally, the general rule is that if you have... Uh, why am I doing that? <laughs> the general rule is that... Uh, the general rule is that um, if you have um, X options, then you are going to have... If you have X options, then you are going to have X minus 1 if statements. Okay? You're going to have x minus 1 if statements. So this can be anything. x can be 5, then which means you're going to have 5 minus 1, which is 4 if statements. If x is 7, then you're going to have 7 minus 1, which is 6 if statements. Okay. But at most, you guys, they will be just giving you 4 if statements. It becomes tiresome to write when you have 5 or 7 if statements and all. Okay. So that is the general rule. So let's go back here and do the first part. So in G6, um, the question said, in G6, enter a formula to calculate the advertising cost, which is the rate entered in step 16, which is F4, which is 124.2, multiplied by 
25 if the result has 50 or less. So let's just go through that. So let's start first of all with the rate. So the rate is supposed to be equal to and it's supposed to be F4. Now F4, please, this must be absolute ref referencing because if you make it as relative referencing, what happens is that um, when you drag, when you replicate this formula, let's just press enter. When you replicate this formula, watch out, here it says it's what? F4. So when you replicate this formula, and do this one, when you replicate this formula, just click this one, drag all the way down, notice how the formula keeps on adjusting. From F4, it goes to F5. Check here. Check here. Okay? So from F4, it goes to F5, it goes to F6, F7, F8, and you find that you'll be multiplying these values um, wrongly okay so what you need to do now is to just make sure that this formula that you select for this cell which is um, f3 f4 must be absolute so just tap f4 on your keyboard and you make it absolute multiply it by the if statements now so if now we're comparing now okay so what are we comparing we're comparing the number of rooms so if the number of rooms is 50 or less so 50 or less so that means you say f um, 6 okay which is the number of rooms less than 51 now why 51 because the immediate number that is the largest number um, before 51 is 50 and that is the one that we want which is less or equivalent to 50 okay next if the value is true multiply by 25 if it is false then go to the second if statement the second if statement if f6 is less if um so it says 75 if the result has more than 50 but less than 101 rooms so which means if it is not this part if it is not this part then it must be above 50 okay so if it is above 50 then we're saying that it should be less than 101 so how you do that just say well just make it less than 101 okay just make it less than 101 now once you do that the true part is that you multiply it by 75 if there is another force then just say if now this is the last logical test okay remember um, a, a, a test with four options has three if statement so this is the third if statement we are putting in there so if f is more than 100 but less than 201 so again if it is if it is less than 100 and one then it must be more than 100 but less than 201 okay which means from 101 to um, 200 so we test now for 200 so just say if it is less than if f6 is less than um, 2 <coughs> excuse me is less than 200 or 201 rather then multiply by 150 now the first part we have exhausted all the three none of them is true the only thing that remains is the last one so we don't need to test it we just put it as that and close for that one close again and close again tap enter key and there you go now the beauty about excel is that it formats automatically the field it inherits the property from this other field that was formatted initially and it inherits that so when you replicate this formula all these other fields will be formatted and that's how beautiful um, excel can be okay step 20 done let's go to step 21 in cell B27, enter a formula to add the number of rooms for the location in column A. So let's decode this one. B27, okay, we're going to enter the formula. So let's go to B27. B27 is here. We're going to enter a formula, and this formula, what we did do? To add the number of rooms for the location in column A. So this, is, this formula is based um, on a condition being met. So you're going to use some if okay so that a range of cells can be added if a particular condition is met okay so what are the cells that are going to be added the number of rooms what's the condition the location that is there so the location should match the one that is in column a so let's come back here so here the location which is this one uh, for example we have northwest should match the ones that are in column here down here okay so what we do we are going to say some if and then brackets and then you provide the range of the sales where you want uh, this to be so the range of the sales are actually from um, this one from 
um, this one, E6, hold shift key on your keyboard and tap the last one, E24. Okay? Now, these guys must be absolute referencing. So, tap um, F4 on your keyboard. Otherwise, if you don't tap F4, um, these fields, um, these, they become, um, they become that. So, make sure that they are absolute referencing. Not like this. Then make them tap F4 on your keyboard and make them absolute referencing like that. Next, the criteria. The criteria is, if there is a match, what should we comparing, uh, be comparing the location values? So, Northwest should be compared with something here. So, we compare with Central. Okay? So, just tap on Central, which is 27. Okay? And then, comma, and then the sum range. The sum range is actually the rooms. So, tap on the number of rooms from F6. Um, hold your Shift key and hold your Shift key and tap on the last one. Okay? those and then to make these cells absolute referencing the reason we want to make them absolute referencing because we don't want when we replicate this formula we drag and drop these values to start adjusting like i showed you in the previous um section okay so tap f4 on your keyboard and you make it absolute referencing close it and tap enter key and that should be it next step um replicate the formula entered in step 18 19 and 20 for each result let's go ahead and do that and we also replicate the formula we just entered in step 21 Let's do that. So replicate this one in step 18. Brr, drag it. Replicate this one. Brr, drag it. And replicate this one. Brr, drag it. Okay, next step. Replicate this one. Bingo. Okay. Ap apply appropriate formatting. So let's look at if there's any formatting needs to do. We're told that it should format only to two decimal places, of which it is to two decimal places, and it should be of this currency. That's what that's that's perfectly fine. Um, next, we need to um, we need to um, let's see where where are we step twenty four. Seven printer spreadsheet showing the formula. Make sure that your name, center number, and candidate number are displayed in the appropriate place on your spreadsheet. Okay. So let's put our details there on the spreadsheet. Let's go to insert and then um, head and footer and go to footer and insert that. Okay, so insert Chikasa, Evans, um, ZM556 and 0001. Okay, that should be fine. Next, um, <clears throat> make it into landscape. Okay. So change the orientation to landscape. Go to page layout. Um, come out of here. Page layout orientation landscape. Scroll up. Um, then change. Um, the contents of the cell should be fully displayed. And oh, we need to change. Uh, make sure that the formulas are displaying. Okay. So come back here to formulas and show formula. Okay. Make sure that the formulas are displayed. Um, next thing that we're supposed to do is what? Let's see. So select this, double click. Okay. Um, all the formulas should be displayed, should be in landscape and all. I don't know what else we need to be done. Center number, candidate number, I entered an appropriate space. So, yeah. So I think we're done with this part. Let's try to see, or we need to put the rows and column headings. So let's go back here. We try to print preview it. And um, it shouldn't shrink the fit on no scaling. So remove no, uh, the scaling. It shouldn't put um, fit on one page, okay? Because we are not told to do that. So go to page setup to add the rows and column headings. Go to sheet and then go to row and grid lines. Add the grid lines and just note that it's going to be like so, okay? So that is good. And then go ahead and print this. Now, don't worry about um, um, the number of pages because some of you, you may attempt to make this uh, fit on one page. Please don't make it fit on one page unless you are told to do that. So go ahead and print this as it is and it will come out perfectly fine. Next step, um, step 25. Print the spreadsheet showing the values. Make sure that it is in portrait orientation and the printer fits on a single page. But this time around, we are told that it should fit on a single page. So we should attempt to change the scaling. 
okay so the contents of all the cells are fully visible okay so come back here go back and um, this time remove the formula change the orientation to um, portrait and um, select the table and make sure that it fits on one single uh, page now notice how um, despite let me try to preview it so that you see what I'm talking about if you preview it notice now that the title is kind of um, um, not visible fully this other part is okay but the title is not visible the heading so how you do that and this is permissible uh, Microsoft uh, Microsoft <laughs> coverage allows you guys to um, to do what I'm about to show you okay so you need to select this cell and text wrap it okay when you wrap it then you need to drag it down here so that it is fully visible just drag it around here like that then drag it a little bit further so that it is um, visible okay that should be fine then resize it okay resize the individual cells so that they they fit sort of on one page okay resize them so that they fit on one page okay so that should be that should be fine um, preview it print preview and you notice that it fits on one page and looks good okay so what are we going to do now um, no it doesn't fit on one page <laughs> scale it and uh, fit uh, sheet on one page okay now it fits on one page <laughs> okay so the other thing that you notice is that uh, we've not been taught to put the columns and row headings so we need to remove them okay so go to page setup and remove um, the row and grid lines okay and it should remain like that that looks good and go ahead and print this now okay so once you print that go to step 26 change the data model so that the result sun village has an extra 50 percent or 50 rooms not 50 percent okay 50 rooms extra 50 rooms added so whatever value is existing we add 50 rooms so we are going to resort and then we change the value for sun village let's come back here go back there and um resort sun village is here so from 25 the rooms change add 50 that becomes 75 and then go ahead and print um, go ahead and print this so save and print the spreadsheet showing the values make sure that it is in portrait orientation which we've done it fits on a single page which we have done and the contents are fully visible which we have done so come back here preview it and you'll see that all the other properties are fully visible and that should be fine okay so um, next we are going to save and print your evidence document okay make sure that you have entered your name center number and candidate number and go ahead and print your evidence document okay so guys this has been Evans and um, thank you so much for watching uh, these video tutorials I hope you've learned one or two things and uh, this marks I think the end of the papers for 2016 I've solved all the March uh, February March papers all the June um, May June papers and all the October November papers and now we wait for the March 2017 um, paper so that we can add it to the list as well so thank you so much don't forget to subscribe to like and comment uh, on this channel and I'll see you in the next videos okay see you